My name is Hannah, and this is my year of less stuff. Hey y'all, welcome to my cream blush haul. <laughs> There's nothing I love more than a rhyme, except maybe a cream blush. Before we get into the meat of the video, here is what happened. I just dyed my eyebrows, like, an hour ago. I usually do it at night and then they kind of darken overnight and then the next morning it's pretty dramatic and usually the morning after dyeing them I put on like a pretty strong eye look to help balance it out and then by the next day or the day after that I've washed my face a couple of times and they've started to mellow out and that's when they look really good. They don't usually look really good the day after. I usually look like Bert the Muppet from Sesame Street the day after. I forgot that when I sat down to dye them right before filming. I just I just felt like doing it. I just felt like they were getting kind of wan. And then I went to film the demonstration footage of myself applying all of the cream blushes that I hauled, showing you what they look like on my cheeks. That's going to be part of the meat of the video. You're going to see what they all look like on me, but it's going to be on a me that looks like Bert because my brows are so dark and I don't have anything else on my face and I don't have anything else on my eyes in that footage. This is just to say, don't be shocked. I know it's a little bit intense, but that's the moment that I'm having right now on my face. And even though it's a little bit shocking, it won't keep you from being able to see what the blush actually looks like on a person's cheek. At the very least, you'll be able to see what the blush would look like on Bert. So that's what happened with my eyebrows. But here's the other thing that happened. The thing that happened with my, with my cream blushes. Do you remember like, not even five videos ago when I was like, okay, I won't buy all five cream blushes that I have in my cart. I didn't exactly go ham when I was saying fine. I was saying to myself, fine, I won't buy all of the cream blushes in my cart. I didn't do that because I did have like eight cream blushes in like my cart at Detox Market or Credo Beauty or something like that. I feel like the clean beauty brands really lean into the cream blushes. So my foray into cream blushes in some ways has been like a foray into smaller brands, indie brands, clean beauty brands. So I didn't go ahead and check out with like a big hefty cart of a bunch of cream blushes from one of those online shops. I didn't do that. What I did do is I sort of judiciously acquired a cream blush here and there. And I didn't really realize that it was adding up to be so many, which is just as bad, right? Buying five cream blushes one at a time from different places is just as bad as buying five all at once from one shop in terms of like overspending, overbuying, trying to keep my shopping under control. It's just more insidious and it doesn't feel as bad. So I don't feel totally amazing about what happened, but I'm going to save talking about that until my check-in at the end of the month, which is coming very soon. My feelings about buying these blushes, the other stuff that I bought this month, like how I did with my budget, with moderating with my budget. Not great, to be honest. It's been a little bit of like a weird month when it comes to finding my way with my issues with spending and shopping. But this isn't the video in which to talk about that. I don't regret buying any of these blushes. I really like all of them. I feel like I made good choices just just within like the, the vacuum of like whether the blush is good and whether I'm going to wear it and whether I'm going to enjoy it. I think I made good choices. And I am really excited to have enough stuff to be able to like do a haul video. That That's not usually what I get to do on YouTube. And it's kind of fun that it came about relatively organically for me. I bought each of these things because I really wanted them. I've been wearing them a lot. And so even though this is a haul, it's also kind of like mini reviews because I know what I think about most of these beyond just like a very first impression. So let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. The first cream cheek product, it's really like a cream cheek haul. I'll probably call it cream blush haul in the thumbnail. Mm, I don't know yet, but one of the products is the highlighter that I'm going to be talking about. And this is technically a bronzer and it's technically like a glowy cheek product. So I replaced the compact in one of my, in actually two of my Cure Weiss compacts, my empty Cure Weiss compacts, but I didn't do it at all at once. I didn't like buy two inserts for Cure Weiss compacts at once. I, I bought one and then several days later I bought the other. So that's why I'm like kind of going one by one in terms of the story time aspect of this haul. I actually went to the physical store Credo Beauty. I went with my friend Julia who has a really tiny baby. I went to hang out with the baby and then we decided to just go on like a little excursion because the baby's about a month old. Julia hasn't been out of the house that much and so it was just like a way to 
do a thing. And I had been wanting to go to Credo and I had been wanting to like look in person at some of the Curewise inserts and think about whether I wanted to replace any of my compacts. And to be totally honest, it I only bought the one thing when we were there, but it was seeing and swatching the other ones that led me to eventually purchase this other one because several days later I kept thinking and thinking and thinking about the color that's inside of this one. And I was like, you know what? I think I really want that one as well. And it surprised me actually. This is the most surprising purchase that I made, but we'll get there, we'll get there. So these compacts, and I think a lot of you know this already, but I'm just going to fully lay down the context here in case anyone who's watching doesn't know this, because if not now, when? Like this is the video in which to give the full story, the lowdown. These compacts are old. Years ago, it was when we were still living in Portland, it was before I went to graduate school, so it must have been 2000. 13 at the absolute latest. At the absolute latest, it was 2013. I want to say it was kind of soon after Cure Weiss launched, and that might have been why these products were even on my radar, because I wasn't as into beauty then, not even close. I was, I was into it inside my soul. It was trending in my soul, but I wasn't watching YouTube. I, I did haunt Sephora from time to time, but, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same between beauty and me then as it is now. But these products got on my radar and I purchased three of them. Yes, but not all at once. I remember how it happened. I purchased two. My first purchase was Desired Glow, which is a cream blush that Kira Weiss makes, and then Radiance, which was her only highlighter at the time. I think she still carries Radiance, and it's kind of like a, um, almost like a lavendery, weird looking cream highlight. I was really into cream highlights at that time, and cream blushes, obviously. That was like most of what I wore back in the day when I didn't know that much about beauty, which is kind of interesting, because I'm returning to it so full for force right now. I remember not liking Radiance. I didn't find it very radiant. It was kind of like a dull, it wasn't like really sheeny. And I remember that it was a little bit gritty. And if I ever used it on my eyes, it would leak down into my eyes and the grit would like make my eyes water. So I didn't end up really liking that product. But the way things were for me back in the day, that didn't matter. I didn't continue searching and searching until I found my holy grail. I just used up that product and I completely used radiance. Like I used the entire pan. I scraped it. I completely used it up until there's nothing left in the little corners of the pan. So that was radiance. Desired Glow was the other one, the blush. Gorgeous, like sun-kissed. It's supposed to make you look like you just got back from vacation type thing. Love, love, love that cream blush. That one I also completely used up. I had the two of them, the highlighter and the blush, and I used them both down to absolutely nothing. And when Desired Glow, when Radiance ran out, I didn't feel like I needed to replace it, but when Desired Glow ran out, I was like, I want to replace this because that's the cool thing about them. They're magnetic. So this little pan pops out. There's a hole in the back. You just stick a little pin sized thing in there and the pan pops out and you can recycle the metal pan and then you can purchase at a much lower price the insert. I think that the compact, if you buy it with the blush in it, new, like the you buy the whole unit, I think it's like four, $54 or something. It's in the 50, mid 50s. It's a very, very pricey, high end, clean beauty brand luxury. It's like clean luxury beauty. But at the time they were the only blushes I owned. So it felt appropriate to me. And and I still think that I'm like, good on you past Hannah, like to just buy one blush and completely pan it. $54 is that's fine. Like that's, that's less than I spent on all of these blushes together. I try to have no regrets. Like I like the person that I am now and I love this and I love that this is this is what has happened. It's all been really fascinating. And you know, the, the journey, the journey continues and the journey is really interesting. <laughs> but I think about that Hannah, that version of myself fondly. I was much more chic back then with my just like two little cream compacts that I was just using all the way up and not obsessively buying like 10 more of the same type of product. So when I wanted to replace Desired Glow, the blush, I purchased the insert. I just purchased like the replacement, the magnetic pan, and it's much cheaper. It's like $32 or something just to replace the blush that's inside because a lot of the cost of products is in the packaging. So I think that's wonderful. And it's also very sustainable. It's all metal. And when you buy the replacement, it comes in a paper compact, like a recy recyclable paper, paper compact. They don't use any plastic in their packaging wonderful. And when I replaced Desired Glow, I treated myself to a second blush color. It's the color called Precious. It's a very, very pale pastel 
sort of nudie peach and that is a gorgeous blush. So then I had two blushes. I had Precious and I had Desired Glow and I had a third empty compact which is still empty and I think it's in my, um, my backups box. And then my ownership of Desired Glow and Precious sort of overlapped with the boom of beauty in my life. So rather than panning those two all the way down to nothing, I used about half of each of them and then I started getting into other blushes and they kind of just like slipped to the back of my drawer. During my no buy year, I pulled them both out again and I fell back in love so hard with the formula. And I used them and used them and then during that year they went off. They both started smelling really strongly of crayons, that really, really clear, like this makeup has gone bad smell. I don't blame Pure Weiss for that. They are, you know, fresh, clean beauty products. They, I think that they have different kinds of preservatives or less intense preservatives than a lot of other makeup. And I had also owned them for a really, really long time because again, I must have purchased them in 2013, maybe 14. And my no buy year was 2018. So they really did last like a respectably long time, especially for a cream product. So that was a lot of context, context galore. When Julia and I were in Credo Beauty, we went in together. I I was sort of intent on deciding which one which one I wanted to replace, and I was kind of curious to be able to actually swatch all the colors to see them in person because I don't think I had ever done that before. So I was swatching around, and I saw that Pure Weiss, since I last investigated, has released these bronzers. This one is called it's called Lustrous, and this is the paper packaging, by the way, that the the refill comes in. So I thought I was going to buy Desired Glow because that to me is like one of my all time favorite blushes. It's just simply stunning. I was swatching around, swatching around. I thought I was gonna buy that, but this would have been the third time that I purchased a pan of Desired Glow. The third time. And I'm, I'm the kind of bee who likes variety. So even though I haven't had it in a long time and I think of it fondly and I miss it, there was something keeping me from like just buying it again for the third time. There was something keeping me. I was kind I was swatching around and I was like, maybe I'll find something else that I want more that I want just as much. And the really interesting thing about this, this bronzer called Lustrous, is that it's pretty much the exact same color as Desired Glow. It really, like I swatched them side by side and I showed them to Julia and she was like, they look the same. It's just that this has a little bit of sheen in it. And like the original highlighter that I had from Kira Weiss, the one that was, um, I think, called Radiance, it's not that radiant. And when I'm applying the blushes, I should have said this before, when I'm applying the blushes in the shots, which I'll, I'll now be like rolling the footage, I hope, of myself applying this, I applied them over a base of Glossier Future Dew mixed with a little bit of green color corrector and a teeny tiny bit of foundation. So my skin was already pretty glossy from the Future Dew. And I think you can see that all of the blushes benefited from that a little bit. But when it's blended out, this Kirwise bronzer does have a bit of a sheen to it. It does have a bit of a sheen that's all its own. I have gone ahead and tried it on my eyes because I wanted to see if it had that same problem of making my eyes water as the other shiny product I once had from Kira Weiss. It doesn't. It doesn't make my eyes water. It works as a kind of eyeshadow. It does crease a little bit, but not badly. The thing that I have to say about this so far, I've had it for a couple of weeks, is that it it's harder to apply than I remember the Cure Weiss product being. It leans a little bit patchy. It can patch up a little bit. If you have hairs on your face, it will like grip to the hairs. And what I've realized is that I think because there's so much oil that solidifies in these products, they really perform best when they're warmed up. I like to apply cream blushes with a brush, but with these products, I've been really going in and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing with my finger and getting it nice and warm so that the bit of product that I'm applying to my cheeks is like the temperature of it is higher than it was in the pan. And then it's much more emollient and much softer. And then the brush will handle it really well and it's much less likely to be patchy. When I first opened this, when I first got it, I hadn't had one of these in a long time. And I just went right in with the brush and started going and it was awful. It was like super patchy and sticky. And I realized later that that was because I was dipping right into the sort of slightly sealed over set surface of this pan of like very oil-based natural product. And it was cold. So it was just like not 
it my the warmth of my cheek wasn't enough to make it into the product that it's supposed to be. And then I remembered that when I fell back in love with those Kirwise blushes back during my no buy year, it was in the summer and it was really hot. It was like really hot in our apartment. It was in our old apartment. We didn't have air conditioning and they were a little bit melty all the time. Like every time I opened one to use it, it was like really soft and creamy and melty in the pan because of the temperature of, of our apartment. So I think that that's part of why they were performing so seamlessly for me in that circumstance. So it's too bad that there's a little bit of a wrinkle in the ease of use, but now that I've figured it out, it's fine. Now that I've figured it out, I don't feel like the product is underperforming. So I've really, really been enjoying this. I feel like it's desired glow, but with just like a little bit of texture, a little bit of sheen, a little bit of excitement, something slightly different. And I do think it is if anything, a teeny bit browner than Desired Glow. And on this little cream blush rampage, on this supermarket sweep of cream blushes, the thing that I was actually trying to avoid was orange. I was feeling like the few cream blushes that I have, ColourPop Roosevelt, this one that I have from um, Holika Holika, the Jelly Dough Blusher, the, the nudes, like the nude cream blushes that I had collected just piecemeal over the past couple of years. They all are a bit nude and a bit brown, but they lean very orange. And I just wanted to like push into either a rosier brown or like a really neutral brown. And I do feel like the difference between, the very slight difference between Desired Glow and this bronzer from Cure Weiss is that the bronzer is just the teeniest bit more brown and the teeniest bit less orange. So I feel good about that decision. That was the only thing I purchased on that little shopping trip to Credo Beauty. But there was one blush that I swatched when I was there and I talked myself out of buying it because it isn't really what I was looking for. What I was looking for was brown. This blush is kind of like a rich coral, like a rich creamy coral that is deep but doesn't lean berry and doesn't lean orange. It's the Kirwais blush called Joyful. The other place I had seen it, so I was I was swatching around and I was really into it there, um, but then I was like, no, Hannah, you should just, you know, just get what you came for. Um, but the other place I had seen it was on Matilda's channel. It's almost like a red. It's one of the Kirwais blushes she has. It's almost like it's a soft red, like um, Bobbi Brown Babe, the crushed lip color in Babe that I received as a sample. I love that color so much because it's technically pink, but it really gives the appearance of like a red that's been softened, like a red that's a little bit drowsy, a red that slept in and hasn't had its coffee yet. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a groggy, sensual, plump, swollen red. That's how I feel about Joyful too. So I went ahead and I placed an order. There was something else I really wanted to buy online that I couldn't find in any of the stores in LA that's coming up. And so I, when I was buying it online, I threw the refill of Joyful into my cart as well. As you'll see when I'm applying it, it really makes me look sunburned. It really is the color that I turn when I actually get sun. And I like the brown blushes because they make it look like I turn a little bit more golden or like a little bit more like a model when I get sun. It makes makes it look like I went out and I got some sun and I and it made me look more like a model. But this this color really makes it look like I went out and got some sun and it made me look like Hannah who's gotten some sun. And the sheen on these Kira Weiss blushes is stunning. Like you'll see it in the picture and just rest assured that even though the Future Dew is giving it a little bit of a leg up on the pile, it really, really is the finish of these blushes that I fell in love with back when I started using them again back during my no buy year. That kind of like skin-like creamy glowy finish. It doesn't look like there's a, an artificial glow added to your cheeks. It just looks like your skin is really, really healthy and then you put a cream blush on it. I'm surprisingly pleased with this purchase. I feel like this was a bit of a risk for me because color-wise it was a little bit impulsive. I was going for the one that sparks joy rather than the one that I felt like would be the most practical. Like getting desired glow again or getting precious again would have been really practical for me because I know I like those colors. But this was the one that was like, pulling my heartstring. It was like, no, pick me, pick me. I'm special and I'm different. And I am really, really glad that I got it. I've been enjoying wearing it and it's surprisingly, um, it's enough toned down. 
I will say that the Kier Weiss blush, the straight up blush, is a little bit less prone to patchiness than the bronzer. Both of them do perform better when they're warmed up, but it's a little bit easier to get the blush to do what I want it to do. It's a little bit less finicky. And it is also something that I can put as a wash of color on my eyes. So let's talk about the Can Make Cream Cheek. This is something that I've coveted and coveted for a really long time and never splashed out on. I feel like I'm saying splashed out a lot. Maybe it's because I kind of splashed out this month. I'm using like casual language to talk about spending money or to talk about shopping to try to make myself feel better about the fact that I spent a little bit more this month than I meant to and like bought more things than I meant to. I think that that's why I keep saying splashed out. I'm like, oh yeah, splashed out, like NBD, splashed out. But really what I mean is <laughs> I was, <laughs> I had more restraint before. I looked at this, I put it in my Amazon shopping cart a bunch of times. And then every time I was like, Hannah, you have enough blush. You don't need another thing, blah, blah, blah. But then I got in this cream blush buying tear. And I started to think of myself as someone who was like, going to compare and contrast some cream blushes for myself and for YouTube. And then in the comment section of one of my recent videos, someone mentioned this and I had forgotten about it. And I was like, oh yeah, as long as I'm doing this, I'm totally going to get that one too. So it's the Can Make Cream Cheek in number 16. It has this amazing quality of being so dinky and cheap. Like you've never seen cheaper packaging. It's as cheap as Wet n Wild packaging. And yet it's gorgeous. It just feels so precious. I love this little jewel. I, I even love how lightweight it is. I genuinely wouldn't have it any other way. I almost like wouldn't want it to be more heavyweight because I like the, the dinkiness and the littleness and the lightness. And it has a price to match. I think I bought it for like under $8. There are a bunch of colors. This is the one that's the most brown. Then when I got it, what surprised me about it was it's, um, it's, darkness, it's redness. It's the darkest of all of the cream blushes that I'm hauling today. You will see in the demo that um, you can sheer it out and it does look really beautiful sheared out, but you can build it up. The performance of this, the quality is so good. The blend is absolutely seamless. The finish is gorgeous. It just melts into your skin. It's buildable. It looks good sheer. It looks good built. It's really, really stunning. This is actually a J Beauty product. And I feel like I can give Cure Weiss a little bit of a pass because it's like a super, super clean ingredients blush. And I think that many brands these days that are hyper prioritizing super clean ingredients struggle a teeny bit with performance. And I, at this point, I'm, I mean, at this point in like the history of clean beauty, I'm, at this moment, I'm okay with like giving them a little bit of a pass. I think that the Cure Weiss formula is truly remarkable in any case. It's really, really good. And it's especially remarkable that it's also clean beauty, but just in terms of like ease of use, performance, speed, blendability, this is better. It's, it's just easier. It's a better product, but it, it's not claiming to be like clean and I'm sure that it's not. So I think that that's probably what accounts for it. Whatever's making it blend is probably stuff that CareWise wouldn't put in their makeup. I have no complaints about performance and formula. The opposite of that. I absolutely worship the way that this performs, but it's, it's brighter and less brown than I was expecting it to be. And I know that almost all of the others are even brighter and less brown than this. Like this is the brownest one. I did, I think I saw when I was looking at this, I have looked at these before and this was always like the only nude one. And then I think I saw that there's now a number 17, which is even more orangey brown. Like it's a little bit more of like a rusty bronze color. So that's probably browner even than this because this is redder than it looks online. And that one looked less red than this one. I'm sort of, I mean, in, in like the abstract, I'm like tempted to get that one too. But again, I'm trying to like move away from orangey cream blushes. And I think that that one would have leaned a little bit more orange. And I have enough cream blush really to last like me for the next two years. So I'm not about to like go out and buy that one. But I did want to mention that if you like me are really on the brown blush train and you see me apply this one, you're like, wow, it's gorgeous, but it's not brown enough. It's too red. There is a number 17 that I think is more brown. But this is a a winner, like a real, real winner. I'm really glad that I got the, I'm glad that I got all of these, but this one was really exciting. The next one is not actually a cream, it's a liquid, but I, I felt like I should include it in this haul because buying it for me, it came from the same place. Like the impulse to get this came from the same place as the impulse to get all these others. It's just because of the effect that this kind of product leaves, the way it blends into the skin, just the, I don't know, the juiciness of it. And I also was motivated to try this because it was in so many big, 
bigger beauty gurus year-end favorites, notably Mariah Leonard, who I really respect. She talked about this as being like really stunning. And there have been some famous cream blushes lately. I mean, the M Cosmetics ones went over very well. I haven't tried those. I feel like the cloud paint is still kind of reigning supreme. And in spite of all of that, and this is a relatively new release, it like squeaked into a bunch of year-end favorites videos. So I really wanted to try it out and I happened to be near our Target recently and so I just ducked in and grabbed it. I was really glad that it was there. I got the peach shade. It's um, gorgeous peach. It's the most neutral one. The thing that surprised me about it is it's thicker than a serum. It's not a serum. It's thick. Like I just pumped a little onto my hand and it looks like a little Hershey's Kiss. It's like, it's standing up, it's, it's, it's got stiff peaks. And then when you blend it out, it's like a gel. It's very pigmented. It's got a, the, the most wet sheen of any of these products. It almost reminds me of Future Dew. It looks like a serum blush that's been mixed half and half with Future Dew because that's like the finish that it gives. So that's stunning. I love everything about it. I wish it was a little bit less peachy and a little bit more neutral. Like I wish that they had another deeper, ruddier shade like a brown shade that would make this that would be perfect but I am glad that in the release of three they didn't release like one cool toned pink one warm toned pink and one apricot because then there wouldn't even have been one for me to try out it wouldn't have been worth it for me to try it if I knew that I wasn't really ultimately gonna like wearing the color and this color is definitely something that I will enjoy wearing and you'll see when I apply it it was interesting applying this one it's less buildable it's like it, it will only build to like a medium sheeny coverage and I really tried at the end of the demo to like tap some on the tips of my cheekbones and get that really intense color like I was doing at the end of the demo with all of the other ones and I, I couldn't really I couldn't really get it to build to any kind of opacity on itself it really is designed for like a gel like wash of color like a watercolory gel so the next product that I'm going to talk about is actually the highlighter. I guess all told there are six products. So in the demos, I did one blush on one cheek and one on the next, one blush on one cheek and one on the next. And then when I was going to demonstrate the last two products, I knew that I wanted to like do this look. That's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the cream highlight and the last cream blush all over my cheeks, eyes, and lips right now. But I wanted to put the highlighter on by itself first so that you could see what it looks like on bare skin. And that's what I went ahead and did. And then I went in later with the blush on top of it. I'm going to talk about this now because it will correspond with that shot of me putting this onto a bare cheek. And then I'll talk about the last and the best cream blush. This is the Charlotte Tilbury um, Beauty Wand Highlight. And this is interesting. I, again, I'll talk a little bit more about my experience of buying all of these blushes in my check-in, or maybe it'll be in my video about how I spent my budget, um, because it it just it's been interesting to observe myself behaving under these new constraints, these less constraining constraints. This was not what I would call an impulse purchase, but it was an unplanned purchase, and it was during a time when I was shopping recreationally. I I needed a break. I needed to take half of a day and like clear my head and just feel my oats and not be stressed. And I went to a mall and I went to a Nordstrom's and I was just swatching around and I swatched this in my hand and I was like, be still my heart. And then I realized that a cream highlight like this, it's in like a little contained container where you can spot it on, not a dropper, not a compact, not a squeezy tube, but something where it's like a hands-free <laughs> application, meaning like your hands don't have to touch the actual product, that can then be blended out with a brush, and that's sheer, not, not sheer, but yeah, like sheer enough, like unpigmented enough, meaning it's like all sheen, and a good enough match for my skin tone, the pigment that is there is a good enough match that it can be blended into a cream blush and become part of the cream blush and hold its own in terms of sheen but not really like mess up not make like a metallic streak that disrupts the color of the blush i'm using a product like that that was something that i didn't know that i needed like didn't know that i wanted but kind of did i knew that there was like a kind of a gap in my cream cheek collection and it was just like the amping up this blush with some shine gap. I have a gorgeous highlighter from Holika Holika, the Jellamy highlighter that I got from Yes Style that is a similar thing to this because it's really sheeny and it's really sheer and it does it does set down, but it's in a tub and I just I don't want to dip my brush into that like tub. This just the the format of this works better. It's also it's luxury, it's Charlotte Tilbury 
And in that moment, I knew I had budget to spend on this. I, I felt good about it. It just was like this kismet moment. It was one of those shopping moments where I was just like, this is right and I feel good. It was one of the best decisions that I made all month when it comes to like buying stuff or not buying stuff. Like, you know, I'm making a million decisions all the time. Most of them are to not buy a thing, but to, to not buy this would have been the wrong decision for me right now in terms of like, the makeup that I'm going for, the glow that I'm going for, I, I feel unequivocally glad that I purchased it. The shine, you'll be able to, I mean, you, you see it on me now. I went, I put too much on, I went a little bit overboard, but I still don't look like the Tin Man, I just look really dewy. And I also really love that it sets down. And some of these cream blushes, none of them have, like stay super, super wet or dewy or oily or coconut oily or anything on my cheeks, like the RMS Living Luminizer, like none of them is that persistently creamy or sticky on, or oily. Most of them sort of, they melt into the skin and they like change once they're on. But mixing this with any of them makes them more tenacious, it like makes it set down more because this dries down. It dries down pretty fast actually and then it really does stay. It is an amazing product for me. I wish I had thought of it sooner. I wish I had thought of trying this out sooner. It wasn't until I like, saw it in store and swatched it in store and like conceived of the way that I might use it with my cream blushes that it hit home. Very, very pleased that I bought this. And then the crowning glory, the dream of my life <laughs> is this Ritual Defeat Inner Glow Cream Pigment in the color Eros. Brown is what I have been wanting and brown has been so elusive. Everything is either red or orange, that bronze color that leans orange. I am so neutral and so pale. A lot of blushes that are considered brown are considered nude. My skin tone will cause whatever color that brown or nude is mixed with, whether it's like a pink or an orange, it will cause that color to just pop and kind of drown out the brown or the nude undertones. So it's been hard, like all of you, you saw all of these blushes on me, all of them are fairly neutral, some of them are considered brown, but they all looked quite youthful and bright on me. Like they all looked quite blushy on me. And I've been wanting a brown blush that makes me look a little bit dead, a little bit sicky, but in like a, again, like a model in the shadows kind of way. That slightly hope look like, is it a blush or is it a contour? But not like a bronzer that has like a dirt shade to it. Like I really wanted one that maybe had tan like nudie tan undertones, beige, really like beige undertones. So it leans into my skin tone instead of leaning into like a bronze. I thought some of these would give me that and it wasn't until <laughs> I got my little hands on this and I purchased this online. I, I went actually on a search for it. I went to Le Pink, which is a little boutique that carries Ritual Defeat, but they didn't have this color. Um, they didn't have this color at Credo when I was there. Um, though I think those were the only two places that I thought might have it, but it, it was just, I couldn't find it in person in LA, uh, in, you know, just within like a week when I was like thinking about trying to find it in the, the two times that I had time to look. So I ended up ordering it from the detox market. That was when I bought the, um, the other Cure Weiss blush. I didn't know because I'd never seen it in person. I just, some of you had recommended it in the comments. I'd read about it, looked at swatches, blah, blah, blah. When I opened it, when it arrived and I opened it and I start, and I put it on my cheeks the first time, I was like hallelujah like this is it it somehow doesn't look like dirt on me i don't think i mean it's hard i don't know how it will look on the monitor i haven't worn it on camera yet because it is intense it's brown it's just it's just brown to me in person at least it really doesn't look like i'm faking a tan like it doesn't have that like healthy glow it looks like contouring like it looks like sculpting but there's enough of a beige undertone that it blends into my skin and onto my cheeks and makes it look like there's color in my cheeks all in one product. It's like color and shadow and it makes me feel kind of snatched. There's just something about the color, the depth of color, the way that it blends into my skin. The other thing that I love about this is the texture. It's seamless and it's kind of hard. So even though it's a cream, it's very clearly a cream. It's not like a cream to powder or anything like that. Because it's a little hard, it's almost like a little bit drier than some of the other powders. It's not moussey or anything. I can use a brush to pick it up and it won't pick up too much. When I dip a brush into this can make, it's a little bit moussey and it picks up so, it's just like two bristles touch it and then it's like there's too much and I have to wipe some of it off. But this, I can dip a brush, dip a brush and go in and it kind of applies with the same 
diffusion and spread as a powder would. So it's really effortless, it's easy to use, and I can keep building and building and building, but then it's got that sheen and that very lifelike, like skin-like quality of a cream blush. I also really love it on my lips. It's worn off a little because I've been talking and, and I actually, I like ate some food in between when I filmed the demo and when I started filming this portion. portion. So I'm gonna reapply the lip so you can like see it just in this shot. There it is as a lipstick. And when I was applying it, I noticed that I had a piece of pepper stuck to my upper lip. <laughs> I hope that, that hasn't been too visible on camera the entire time. I was eating scrambled eggs with a bunch of pepper in them as my little mid-afternoon snack. On top of the fact that it's got a gorgeous texture, it also applies really well on the eyes and doesn't crease very much because of that sort of semi-dry finish when it's applied. The other thing that shocked and delighted me about this is that I don't have a dupe for it. Of course, not in my blushes. But not in my cream blushes, definitely. Not in my powder blushes, and not in my lipsticks. I don't have a lipstick that is this brown. I will show you, actually. I'll show you some swatches. So these were the likely culprits. These were the ones that I was afraid I would be duping when I purchased this product. Maybelline Raw Chocolate is um, a lot oranger. It's just a really, really orange. I'll, I'll swatch them all and then I'll give you a close up. It's really, really much, uh, much warmer. It's that sort of chocolatey warmth. Maybelline Gone Grage is um, more purple. NARS Het Low is again, it's more similar to raw chocolate, just maybe a little bit more depth and a little bit more shine. And then this is the one that's actually the closest to it. It's the L'Oreal Color Riche Shine in Dazzling Dough which I had tried on my cheeks and I actually really loved the tone of it on my cheeks, but the formula doesn't work that well as a blush because it's kind of semi-sheer and shiny and it also has kind of like a strong um, like candy smell, so it's a little bit weirder to apply as a blush than some of the other ones. So I was kind of hoping, I was kind of keeping my fingers crossed for something pretty close to this in tone, but in a formula that works on the cheeks and that is pretty much what I ended up getting. I was so excited when I tried it on and then I was really excited when I watched it next to everything and I saw how different it is. And actually now that I'm seeing them, it's darker and richer in color than Dazzling Doe. Dazzling Doe is a little bit milkier and, and grayer. So it's even less gray than that. So this is Raw Chocolate, Gone Grage, Nars Het Low, L'Oreal Colory Shine and Dazzling Doe. And then there on the bottom is Eros, the Ritual de Fee Inner Glow Cream Pigment. And make no mistake, I've been wearing all of these as blush. Like these are my blushes of choice lately. The Color Reshine is a little bit weird. I have only worn it as a blush a couple of times. And then Gone Grage is, is so grayish that it, it's really more like a contour if I wear it on my face. But especially those other ones. Like I, I've really, I've been wearing them a lot on my cheeks. And um, they, you know, they give me something gritty that it's hard to find in a formula that is designed to be a blush. But Ritual de Fee does not shy away from that grittiness. And they have some other colors. There's a black one, like a black purple one that looks so amazing that can be used on the cheeks and lips and eyes. Gorgeous, like I'm gonna put up a picture right now of the way it looks on the eyes, like this sheeny, wet gloss. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then they also have one that is also brown, but it's a little bit less warm, like a little bit of a colder brown. Uh, they just, they have a number of weird-ish colors for weirdos like me who are looking for non-traditional blush colors. And looking at their blush range has made me realize just how traditional most blush ranges are and just how much they tend to like stay in the, the brights, the pinks, the fuchsias, the oranges, like apricots, peaches, etc. I kind of have opened this like new wing of my the makeup mansion in my brain that is about an interest in slightly non-traditional blush colors. Um, of course, for me, I'm talking mostly about brown, things that like lean into the brown or into the intense neutral nude, into the very, very, very pale camel range. I'm really interested in that kind of blush too. But Ritual de Vie has me thinking about even less traditional colors than that. So I'll be curious to know down below in the comments if any of you guys have tried those other inner glow cream pigments from Ritual de Vie, the, the colors that are even more unusual than the brown that I have all over my face right now. Let me know if you have, and if you have, let me know what you thought of them. I actually am going to swatch everything 
all next to itself on my hand and arm right now so you guys can see everything side by side because I didn't do that in the footage before. So this is the order in which I talked about them. This is the Cure Weiss Bronzer Lustrous. That is Cure Weiss Abundance. This one right here is the Can Make Cream Cheek in number 16. And then this right here is the Physician's Formula Blush Elixir in Gorgeous Peach. It's actually really pretty similar to the Cure Weiss one, but they have such different formulas. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight Wand. That is Eros from Rochelle Defeat. And then lastly, I swatched Glossier Dusk, the Cloud Paint and Dusk just for some comparison in case you also are interested in brown or nude blushes and you already own that one. So that is it for my cream blush haul. I know it's a little bit intense for me to buy so many products at once and talk about buying so many products at once here on my channel. Again, I'm going to be covering that in another video. But the last thing I want to say about it is that buying these products, all of which I'm really excited about. But buying them during my year of less stuff, a year during which I'm not only concerned with how much I'm spending on beauty, but with how many things I'm taking into my home, buying them made me realize that if I am buying six new cheek products and I am happy with all six of them and I'm going to keep and use all six of them, then that means that for me, for the life I want, I have to make room not just in my life with like some stuff like you know i don't know decluttering some old underwear or something but in my actual collection of cheek products like i i was not about to add all six of these into my box of cheek products and just have it grow by six not because of my stuff number but because of my my functionality like it just it felt like that would be very very overwhelming so what I did was I made some room in my cheek products, even though I just recently did a very intense and vicious hard line declutter of all of my makeup, I have decluttered even more of my blushes. I did that before putting these in with the rest of my blushes. And I am going to show you what I decluttered in a video very soon. I didn't just declutter my blushes, but I actually decluttered a lot of my makeup because the reality of this year is starting to sink in and it's making me realize that I didn't weed out as much as I could have weeded out in my end of year declutters. And living a month of the year of less stuff kind of gave me the wherewithal that I needed to actually part with some of the things that I was holding on to. And when it comes to the blush category, that was especially true. It wasn't just living this month, but it was like deciding to purchase some products that I really wanted to, deciding to let myself indulge in a few, like not just one, but like several of this kind of thing made me realize that there were some that I wasn't really ready to let go of before, but that it, it's really time for me to oust from my collection. So that's probably going to be the next video. I, I don't know if I have time to film it today, but it'll probably be the next video. It will be me showing you <laughs> what I've decluttered even more from my collection. And the impulse to do that was kind of like uh, founded in this. I was like, if I'm going to haul blushes, I'm going to declutter blushes too. So look forward to that if you like that kind of video. And um, I really appreciate you guys <laughs> watching this one. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Bye.